Well, hello there, YouTube. We're back again with more Ash 26. Tonight, we have a very brief list of things that need to happen. Consisting of whatever's on this card. The first thing we need to do is lipo. We need to get the lipo into this plane. I want to give you a quick update from last night. These are the bolts that I happen to arbitrarily use as counterweights. Okay, we got our scale zeroed. 61.55 grams. Okay, that was part of the all up weight, just so you can recall. We're at 1,541 grams total. Or, excuse me, 1,540 grams. Now, that's because of the division size on the bigger scale. I could actually weigh it on here, I think. Yeah, I can actually, I can weigh it on there. Because, look, I can go to... Yes! I can actually wait on this little scale. Sweet! I'll do that. I'll get more res resolution. But anyway, that's for later on. So, obviously, yesterday we got a lot of things done. These are back on. Okay, everything's mounted back in. I now have the wire pulled through. I just had pushed it in uh, while I was sanding the surface. So, I got that back through. The next step is basically to start chop suey in. And this is a scary moment. There's been a lot of scary moments in this build series. So why not have another one, right? So as you recall, my CG has been noteworthy um, and a bit of an issue because, let's just be honest, it, it's a little too tail heavy right now. And I don't really understand why that is. I've made lots of accommodations to try to keep this thing from ending up uh, super tail heavy namely extremely small control rods very light servos very light servos um, everything I've done I've done trying to keep everything super light especially behind the center of gravity so one thing we could do is I have the metallic rod in here and then uh, Ian had made me along with the fiber, carbon fiber spar that's in here, which saves on overall or all up weight, doesn't necessarily save on CG that much, but just so you know that spar falls right behind the CG. So who knows? So what we're going to do now, the very first and scariest step for tonight is going to be to cut free and undo some work that we just did the other day but that's not why we're doing it. We're cutting it free so that we can move the electronic speed control because we have now learned that we don't have the clearance that we thought we needed and so we got to do something about it and that's unfortunate but it's just part of the reality of doing this stuff. Sometimes there's a little guess and check Sometimes you got to go back and guess again. In this case, that's exactly what happened. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start by literally just pulling this out, straightening up the leads. If you recall, we, we actually just slipped it in through this opening here. And my end game here is to cut out this frame, which I really, really hate to do. But there's nobody saying that this has to be pulled out first. My hope was to maintain, keep and maintain as much of this structure as we can while still accomplishing our goals. But in thinking about that out loud, we're not going to accomplish very much of our goals if we can't cut at least here to here. Now if we could keep this, that'd be nice because then you would have a, a salvageable mounting location for another servo and likewise here. But as you can see, you'd be right on the edge of being able to make this battery fit. So maybe it's worth trying it and see how close we can get it. It's always nice to have a tight fit. Um, now there's a limit to that, of course, as you all know. But if you have a tight fit, then things don't shift around as much. Okay, so we're going to grab this knife. We're going to start hacking away. Oh man, I, I just don't want to leave it in there and damage it, guys. It would hurt my soul to destroy this thing right now. With all the work that's gone into it, I just can't handle that. So, we'll just do a little more work. 
Okay, so we disconnected those. Now the other thing we could do if we have issues with the way this is going to line up is I could actually solder the wires directly together, take out connectors, change the length of this power wire, so on and so forth. I just hate dead weight, guys. I, I mean, dead weight is dead weight. You, sometimes you got to add it, but I don't know. Personally speaking, I almost never add dead weight. I have for testing, but then I usually just get a bigger battery until I get to, to where I need it. So I'm really struggling with it, especially on this. I mean, we've, we've got hard fought weight savings in this thing. I mean, this isn't like, you know, say, a Hobby King Volantix ASW28 or anything. Sorry, that was a shameless plug. Or my dead one, if you prefer. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, by the way, got a little time off work coming up here pretty soon, so hopefully we'll have just tons of footage for you guys to enjoy while you're also on vacation, hopefully. That'll be coming up here Christmas time, New Year's. So hopefully you guys can enjoy some of that with us. Alright, cool. And out she comes. She walked right past the SBC today, which is pretty cool. Now, there's there's nothing magical about what I'm attempting to do here. But what I'm attempting to do is pretty critical so I'm just wondering what position I can put this 40 amp BSC in so that it fits along with the battery Gosh, it's really awkward to get these things out this prop is pretty much always in the way which you would think that there's gonna be some position you can put it where it's not, not in the way well evidently not because it rests on either side of the fuse. I could pull it forward, I guess. Okay, so we got that out. So now we'll probably, I don't know if we'll just grin and bear it, just put the signal wire in the middle where it won't get cut. I don't want to have to totally unroute that. The other thing is I could extend these leads and put it back here. Oh, wait. Nope. Can't do that. I got to get it as far forward as I can because this is a heavy thing. It's actually very, very light for its power. All right. Time to suit up. I had to do first class, or not first class. I had to do first aid training today for work. That was super fantastic. So... Don't worry, if I chop my finger off, I will put the bag of my finger, I will make sure the finger is separate from the ice. That's one of the things they told us. I'm thinking to myself, well, that's delicious. I happen to be eating my fries from lunch at that exact moment in time. So it's just wonderful. Hopefully you guys aren't watching while you're eating dinner with all that finger in bag talk. But you know what? It's an important topic and somebody's got to do it, right? If you chop your finger off. All right, great, so we got that. Now, why am I doing this? Why don't I just cut it with a knife? Well, because this is a little easier to control. It actually sounds halfway decent, what the heck? Excuse me. Okay, now, you can see where I put the line. I'm going to just try it with a knife. We'll see how this goes.
Now obviously all this stuff acts to stiffen and support the plane, uh, the shape of the plane. And so I, I really hate to cut it out, but at the same time I understand it's a means to an end. And it's going to happen. It's happening, guys. And you know what sucks is we're going to remove this weight and then it's going to become more tail heavy. <laughs> but hopefully that's going to get us just enough to do what we need to do. So It's all about the tiny victories, right? Goodness gracious. Okay, so now we're getting close. Of course, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but like you're sticking the blade in here, and how the heck are you supposed to cut square? There's always something in the way. Aside from having a gigantic blade, then you could hold it up here. I suppose they probably make a tool. I'm just too cheap to buy it. Alright, so I'm going to be careful that we don't set off the smoke alarms because that gets annoying. I have another idea because that's not working as good as I'd like it to. Just going to get out the old handy dandy for the last little bit. Ian, if you're watching, please don't have a heart attack. I'm taking care of your baby. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Ian knows. Vacuum time. So my buddy Esteban is getting his DG505 done right now as well. And Grant L, your plane is looking sweet. I can't wait to see that thing in the air. It's one of my YouTube subscribers. Okay, so let's try and cut this. Okay, so I want to keep this whole strip here if I can. So I'm going to kind of go and round that cut and then just follow right along right into the epoxy where exacto knives go to die. See how I'm cutting a, a different channel now? That's going to take the material out hypothetically. I'm just afraid of slipping and cutting into that material there. That would be bad. Be super unfortunate.
Okay, for the sake of air quality, I'm going to start the exhaust vent, which is going to suck air out right there from over there. It's making some interesting squirrel noises. There it goes. Now it's quiet. Err. Okay, time for a good vacuum suck. Alright. So now I got this last little bit that I'm going to have a heck of a time cutting with a power tool given the certain configuration of this aircraft. So I'm just going to do this manually. Except I don't want to... I'm just afraid it's going to go through the side if I slip. And I probably will. In fact, I'm about certain I will. Gotta be getting close. Just pulling away that time. It sounds so comforting, doesn't it? That crispy breaking, breaking sound. Okay, so now now that we've got that cut. See, I cut all the way through here, so obviously this is this is gone. And I probably should have thought about it. I could have tried to keep that, but I just honestly, it's probably going to go anyway. So really, we're just going to cut from here over. Oh, it's so reluctant. I could maybe put the battery thing in there, so why don't we keep this side for now? We'll probably end up getting rid of it anyway. You know what I mean, Gene? Do I have any genes in the audience? Male or female? I'm curious. And how do you spell your name? Okay, so now we're going to cut here. I'm just torn now. Because I could hypothetically save this portion. But it's going to be a weak strap point anyway, so why don't we just cut it? Just get rid of the unused portion. Now I'm going to save this. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna work this. Okay. Now this is an easy cut because I must be going against the grain. It's not fighting me. Seems like anytime you cut with the grain, it's always a real pain in the neck. I mean, it shouldn't be, but it's hard to control to cut. Oops. Okay. Oh, that's going to be super useful for something else. Don't know what yet, but we'll figure something out. I think I want these nippers. It's a technical term. Sweet. One piece. <gasps> Shaped like a gun. Kick me out of school. Uh oh. This is going to be suitable for limited or no advertisements after that comment. Alright, cool. So now we got to knock these loose pieces out. And then uh, we'll go ahead and clean up the edges here. Ooh, yeah. 
that would be probably doable with a knife since it's thin. I've been racking my brain, guys. It's it's funny, these build videos, you know, because they're so obscene. I've been getting a lot of them that are marked for limited or no advertisement. As you know, there's ads on my channel. That's how I help to supplement my expensive hobby and uh, habit. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, there's this new wonderful bot they've got roaming the channels on YouTube. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're probably a creator anyway. But... They just go around arbitrarily marking random videos, videos that have nothing controversial, no bad language, um, I mean barely innuendos, and they just mark them as totally unacceptable. So, and of course, you read their guidelines and you're following every single guideline, and you request a manual review, and they, 100% of the time, they come through and fix it. Well, for guys like me with huge amounts of traffic, you know, all hundred at a time, um, my loyal viewers watch it. And then about the time they fix it, well, then all the loyal viewers have moved on to my next video. So it's kind of like, thanks, YouTube. Let's all work against each other. Okay, so that looks pretty darn tootin'. I'm going to clean it out again, guys. Okay. All right. So now, um, regardless of what ends up fitting or not fitting, I am going to clean up this one spot because it's just ugly right there. That lip. Let me use my side cutters to just cut at an angle. Booyah. Yes. I don't know if you guys ever watch TV, but um, obviously if you're watching this channel and you're watching these builds, you're either really into RC um, or you don't have cable. But suppose you did. There's this TV show I watched, this whole series. And while I'm cleaning the nose of my airplane, I'm going to give you a review of it. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Because then if you're watching it, you'll be like, Brian, you just gave the whole series away. Well, I'd be saving you a lot of time. But then again, see, at the end of this video series, unless I am killed in a, you know, car accident, you'll see it fly, okay? So, it's just one of these things where sometimes you watch videos, TV shows, and you're like, oh, are they going to find the treasure? Oh, no! No, you didn't! Yes, you did! Well, that was really robust. I think that answered our question. That's going to be going away now. <laughs> um, okay, question. All right, I have an idea. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so here's my idea. Looky there. See this? Suppose I had another servo, and I did want to mount it. Maybe the approach should be to just keep and maintain that position despite it being broken because let's be practical that wasn't doing anything anyway not strong enough so we can always add these later if we decide to reinforce it so all is not lost it's not that big a deal so we'll just hang on to these things these little plywood tabs or whatever you want to call those little cutouts for servos and we're just gonna move on so now I want to sand a little bit I don't know if I want to keep those or not, but I'm going to just get rid of them now so that I don't think about it anymore.
Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the little hook point in case the hook point proves itself to be useful for something. Okay, so question for you people that are creators along with me. And by the way, if you haven't already figured it out, I go around and watch them videos too all the time. So I don't just I don't just make these beauties. I love watching YouTube videos. That's how I got started into this RC stuff again. Or one of the things that got me started back in. Kind of helped me along. I said, you know what? I could probably do that. And so I did. And here we are. Um, my question for you creators out there is, how the heck do you guys get permission to use your copyrighted music? Now, maybe it's an unmonetized channel, and so you're just not getting dinged. But it would be kind of cool to be able to, like, use music that is um, in a legal way that isn't going to get my content hijacked by some online bot that goes around finding copyright violations. So if you know the answer to that, just put it in the comments. Or better yet, private message me if you have ideas. All right, so this... One issue I'm kind of thinking about is like this extra cable. Might not be a bad time to just spool that up. The other option is when I do finally get this position, might not be a bad idea to go ahead and cut it and rebuild a new end. Speaking of watching YouTube videos, today I was watching videos about guy, he was building these ends and he was doing a really nice job. And he had another style of connector builder that only had one side instead of two. This does the, the bite that goes into the sheath and the copper bite. And I thought that is awesome. I need me one of them. So what am I doing right here? I'm just uh, kind of twisty tie to hold down weight. This is temporary now. I say that. But when I say temporary, sometimes that means permanent. It just depends on if I need to move it again. And there's always a possibility I'll need to move it again like in 10 minutes but beyond that I'm probably gonna leave it if it works because if it works now you know I won't have a reason to move it okay so you see what I'm doing I'm basically just twisting I mean it's a twisty tie I really don't need to explain it but I'm gonna do it anyway Twist until it bites. Don't twist until it cuts. If you twist until it cuts, you're going to be kind of self-defeating a little bit. And I say that in a pseudo-humorous fashion. I know there's some of you guys out there that probably would just think, just tighten it until you can't tighten anymore while it'll break. But the thing is, if you can do that in such a way that the, the metal is not poking out the end too, that's always a good idea. Because even though, you know, this... This is just wire meant to shape. It's still, you know, going to conduct. So if you cut your wire, there's a possibility you could have some conduction there. What is that noise? It's super annoying. Oh, it's the ESC on the side. That's wonderful. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to clip it back just a little bit above our twist point. Look how fancy that is. Would it have been easier to do zip ties? Absolutely, lutely. It would be tons easier to use a zip tie. Okay, so now we've established many things today. The most important is, please fit. Oh, thank goodness. It does fit. Now, of course, we don't have the ESC in there yet, but we will shortly. Oh, no, you don't quite fit. Oh, no, not yet. So, okay, how are we going to handle this? Are we going to put it down this way? And it doesn't really matter yet, because really the ESC is going to be... I may have to take a little bit more off the sides. I knew that that was a risk we were, we were running. See? We need a little bit more room to slide that in there. Um, and then, of course, keeping in mind that this has to fit 
between those servos, which currently it does not. Ooh, another problem I didn't really have completely wrapped my mind around. I think this should fit under the servos once I drop it down. I can't spin it to get it in though, guys. Um, we may have to try to remove a little bit more material here. So guys, we're running out of time. Big surprise, right? And not much has happened. That seems to be a common principle of my video series lately. But let's just be real. There's a lot of stupid little nit nitty gritty uh, steps that we're involving ourselves in on this build. And I just want you guys to learn as much as I'm learning. Which is that this is a really beautiful plane, but it's a lot of work. So without running out of memory, I'm hoping I'm going to wish you all a good evening. And I hope you come back for more. Preferably, we'll be getting some things done in the next video. Let's see if we can drop this down in here at least before you guys all go.